Hello everyone, and welcome to Introduction to R. This is the first video in what's going to be a 30-part series introducing the R programming language for data analysis and predictive modeling. Now, what you see on the screen here is the index for this guide. So I'm just going to quickly go through and show all the different sections that we're going to learn over the 30 lessons. So we're going to start with section one, getting started, which is this first lesson, along with a couple just talking about the very basics of R arithmetic and data types. Second section, we will have several lessons covering the basic data structures available in R. We'll have a couple lessons in section three covering basic programming constructs. In section four, we will cover data exploration and cleaning tasks. You'll actually be spending quite a bit of your time doing data analytics on these tasks, so this is a pretty important section. We'll have a couple lessons on plotting. Then we'll have two different sections on statistics, one that's more basic, descriptive statistics, and then one on inferential statistics and statistical testing. And our final section will be four lessons on predictive modeling. So that is unsupervised learning, basically making predictions on a known target given some input data. And our motivating example for this whole guide and the predictive modeling part in particular will be the Titanic disaster data set. So when we do our predictive modeling, we'll be working with this and making predictions on who survived or perished in the Titanic disaster based on features like the passenger class, gender, cabin, how much money they paid for their ticket and things like that. So now we'll jump in and get started on the first lesson. So I'll click through to getting started. I will leave links to all the relevant kernel pages below. So I'll leave a link to the index that we just saw, and then I will also leave a link to this first kernel page that we're gonna be working with getting started. So everything we're going to be doing in this guide is going to be in the form of Kaggle kernels. The Kaggle is a programming and data science competition website that also offers a cloud computing platform that lets you make code notebooks. And uh, a code notebook is basically a system that lets you interleave text and code cells in a convenient way that lets you output them into HTML. So it basically lets you write some text, write some code, maybe write some more text explaining what the code did, and then ultimately weave it into an HTML page that displays nicely in a web browser. So what we're looking at right now is an HTML page that's been rendered by a notebook that I made for lesson one. Um, and you'll notice lesson one is actually mostly just text because we're going to be talking about the R programming language itself and the kernel environment and not really actually getting into R until the next lesson. So if I scroll through here and show you what the lesson page looks like, there really isn't much for code. It's all text, but it is an HTML page that was generated by the kernel environment. And we'll spend most of this lesson going into what that is, but we'll start just by talking about R. So what is R? It's an open source programming language used for statistics and data analysis. It was built from the ground up for the purpose of statistics. So unlike Python, which is another popular language for doing data analysis and statistics, um, R was built for that purpose, whereas Python was built as a general purpose language. So a lot of operations that are common to do in data analytics is baked right into the base R programming language, and you don't need to download or install any extra packages for those types of things. In Python, you, you often have to find and download add-ons to do certain things. That's one nice aspect of R. R also has some very nice plotting packages, so that is an advantage that it 
tends to have over Python, in my opinion. But both languages are used extensively in data analytics and data science. So I, I would recommend learning both of them. And I'm actually planning to make another 30 part introductory guide in Python that will cover the very same topics and lessons that we're going to cover in this guide. So if you're interested in learning Python, uh, look out for those lessons. Now, you can have a local install of R and write code on your local computer, and you could follow along that way. But this whole lesson and guide assumes that you're going to be either just following on YouTube and watching the lessons to learn what you can, or using the Kaggle kernel environment, using the links provided in the, in the descriptions below, and then forking the notebooks that we're working with for each lesson so that you can work with them online. And doing it that way means everybody will be on the same page in terms of their coding environment, and we won't need to be installing packages or having any problems with compatibility. But if you do want to have a local install of R, you can do that. In this R setup section here, I'm describing how to do that, and you just need to click this download the R programming language link, and you probably want to edit it with something other than a basic text editor, so I have a link to R Studio as well. So for a local install, all you really need to do is go to this page, download the appropriate version of R for your operating system, and then I would recommend using R Studio as your editor, so you're probably just going to want to download the R Studio desktop free version, and that will allow you to edit R in a nice environment. But we are going to be focusing on using the Kaggle notebooks. So the remainder of this lesson is just going to consist of essentially a tutorial of how the Kaggle kernel notebooks work and how we'll be interacting with all the different code that we're going to be covering in all the lessons. So the page we're working with, as I alluded to, is actually the HTML that's been rendered by a notebook that I made. So for the rest of the lesson, I'm going to switch over to the notebook itself. So I'm going to click on that tab and we'll see the notebook that generated what we were just looking at. So this is the notebook environment itself. And when you press this commit big commit button here, it will save and run everything you have in the notebook and then render it as that HTML page that we were just working with. So it'll essentially turn all your text and code into a nice uh, web page that you can look at. And it's a nice way to uh, display and present what you are working on. So in the notebook editor here, we have some menus to run various commands, a file menu that lets you upload a notebook, download the current one. Um, you can do commit from here, but you can also use this button. You can do various other commands under edit. You can move cells up and down. You can convert a cell between code and markdown. We'll go more into that in a second. You can also delete the currently selected cell. You can do things like insert new cells, new code and markdown. Um, you can run code and you can get some help. Now, there are two different types of cells, code cells and markdown cells. A markdown cell is simply a cell of text that you can also alter and add to by putting in special characters that do special things. So let's look at that by creating a new markdown cell. I can do that by clicking this button, markdown. And once I have the markdown cell, if I click on it, I enter edit mode, and then I can just type whatever I want to. So edit mode. And if I run that, it just creates a new bit of text, but you can also add various command, special tags and things to make it do different things, and that's what the markdown is. Markdown is just special characters that alters text in some way to make it different. So, for instance, if I put a hashtag in front of this edit mode and a space, that makes it into a size, big size heading. So now this is like a big heading. And if I put another hashtag, and now it's a slightly smaller heading, and there's just lots of different commands like that that you can use. And uh, the editor does have some of these things built right into it, you can see here. So if I don't know the command for making something bold, I could press that. Oh, it turns out that to make things bold, you use these two asterisks on either side of things. And now it's bold. 
or if I want to do italics, I could do that. So you can either use the little built-in tools they have here, or if you actually know commands, you can type them yourself. Um, again, this is a little command menu built into the kernel Kaggle kernel environment, but you can do everything you see here with other commands if you need to, but this is just a quick way of doing things like moving that cell up, down, converting it to code, or back to markdown, or deleting the cell. Let's do that. So the other type of cell is code. If I make a new code cell, this cell is something where we're typing in actual R code, and then we can run it and see what the result of that code would be. So in this code cell, why don't I type something that we can run? Two plus two. And now if we run this cell, it'll show what the R output would be. Um, you can run the cell in various different ways. You can use this little execute cell play icon. So you can see the output is four. That is correct. You can also run cells from up here, run the current cell, run all the cells in the whole notebook, or run all the cells before. So this can be a nice way of doing many cells at the same time. Um, I generally run individual cells with a shortcut. You can just do control enter to run a cell. So that's usually what I do, because it's the quickest way. And I will delete this again. And there is one other important thing to note about the notebook environment. There's two different modes you can be in. There's the edit mode, which we were just showing. That's when you are actually in a cell adding to it. So right now we're in edit mode because you can see this text cursor blinking there. And if I type anything, it just adds to that current cell. So that's edit mode. We're editing it a specific cell. And then there's command mode which lets you do things on the cell level, like add new cells, delete cells, convert cells from one to another. Things we've already shown how to do using these little menus, but when with the command mode, you can do it using keyboard shortcuts. So to enter command mode, you press the escape key. So I'll do that. And now that we're in command mode, we can do various other things. So I'll press H, because that's something in command mode, when you press H, it brings up all the shortcuts. So that's a good thing to do if you're just trying to figure out what's possible. So under the shortcuts, it's telling us the different things we can do. When we're in command mode, which we enter by pressing escape, these are all the different commands. Um, you don't need to know most of these, but some of them are useful, such as the Y key will change a cell into code. The M key will convert it into markdown. So that's a nice one to quickly toggle in between things. You can quickly add new cells with the A and B keys here. So insert a new cell above with A, insert a new cell below with B. Those are ones that I tend to use quite a bit. And also deleting cells quickly. So if you're in command mode, the you can delete the currently selected cell just by pressing D twice. So that can be a quicker way of doing it with a shortcut instead of using the little trash can icon. Um, and it can also be useful to press the Z key to undo a deletion. So if for some reason you have a cell that you delete maybe by mistake that had a lot of text or code in it, um, you wanna enter command mode with escape and then press Z and then you can get it back. So maybe I'll just show how to do that because that's one that can be pretty important if you delete something that you actually really wanted. So DD to delete that cell. Oh no, all that text is gone. We probably didn't wanna do that. So we should still be in command mode. So I'll press Z. And there's all of our code came back. Maybe we'll enter command mode, press up. So now we're selecting that in command mode and maybe we'll convert this back to markdown. So you can use the arrow keys while in command mode to switch to toggle but up and down between all the different cells. So I'm navigating with the arrow keys right now instead of a mouse. So that's can be a quicker way of doing it. But uh, yeah, that's most of what you'll need to know for interacting with this guide. We're not going to be doing anything super complicated with the kernels, and I will try to make all the lessons um, work well so that you won't really need to be doing too much yourself with adding new cells or things like that. You'll mostly just be able to come in, make a new Kaggle account, use the links that I've provided to go to the lesson, and then you'll want to click uh, Fork, or I believe they actually changed it to 
copy and edit but when you click that you'll be able to make a copy of the current lesson and edit it in the same environment that we're looking at here and then you'll be able to go through and if you want to run all the cells yourself with command enter select them and do command enter to run them or you could alter them you could add new cells you can do whatever you want but uh, you won't need to really be doing too much uh, finicky with the kernel environment if you don't want to but it can be a good learning experience to get in and try some things yourself so that's about it for this getting started guide um, in the next lesson intro to R part two R arithmetic we will just be learning about the very basics of R and the different arithmetic operations you can do with it essentially using the programming language as a very powerful calculator so I will see you again next time guys